One of the questions I love to hate is, what do you do? It's a reality for those of us who work in the arts that our careers become peppered with slashes. I'm a performer slash teacher. I'm an opera singer slash educator slash administrator. I'm a writer slash barista slash barrister slash performer slash parent slash person who works in the arts. The vast majority of us who work in the arts make our careers from sticking our fingers into numerous pies. I think of myself first and foremost as a composer. So I write music mostly for money and sometimes also not. I'm an educator so I lecture at university and I also work in arts management. I make about 15% of my income from education, about 15% from writing music and the remainder from my job in an arts organisation. This is how I support myself in a world that doesn't always value artists very fairly. Stephen Fry put it best when he said, we are not nouns, we are verbs. I am not a thing, an actor, a writer. I'm a person who does things. I act, I write, and I never know what I'm going to do next. I think you can be imprisoned if you think of yourself as a noun. Most people would agree that art is important in some way or another. As an inquisitive person who talks about music for a living, I often find myself asking people whether they think this is so. It's rare that I come across someone who's like, oh, nah, not really. But the problem is this. If we all value art to some extent, why is it that outside of the 1%, the Lady Gaga's and the Banksy's and the John Williams's, the overwhelming majority of artists, of career artists, are struggling to make ends meet? Why is it that these artists are shunted into careers peppered with slashes, often by necessity and not by choice? Knowing that someone isn't a career artist or isn't an artist full time, do we value their output less? And does it ultimately dilute their ability to create their best work? I believe that artists are largely responsible for curating our daily experiences. Now, I'm not just talking about the 1% of artists either. I'm talking about the nameless and faceless and often uncredited artists that contribute the most to the innumerable sights and sounds that constitute our daily experience. Let's explore this a little bit further. How much art do you encounter each day? Now, that sort of depends on what you consider to be art. There are many, many different takes on what art actually is, but for our purposes, let's define art as the application or expression of human creative skill and imagination. We can thank Google for that one. <laughs> so the question then becomes, how many instances of human creative skill and imagination do you come across each day? Art is everywhere. It is in our bedclothes, the tiling in our bathrooms, in our curated online experiences we scroll through Instagram. It's in the crockery we use, in the tea we drink, the cars we drive. It's in signage and typefaces, the truly awful upholstery on the public transport. It's in architecture, pavement and flooring designs. It's in books, newspapers, the illustrations on our coffee cups. Art is in our packaging. It's in our IKEA instruction manuals, it's in the mobile phone wallpapers that we nick from the internet and it's in the photos of special moments that we stick on our fridges and always the ever-present soundtrack of music. It's in every store, in every cafe, it's in the ads on our TV, it's in the shows on our TV that we binge watch after work to soothe and unwind. It's in the car, in the train station. Why is it always Liszt or Mozart, by the way, in the train station? Always. It's in our films to excite us, in our airports to calm us, and on every electronic device just waiting to be summoned whenever and wherever we choose. What if we took that all away? What if we took away all of the seemingly mundane objects and experiences that we share with millions of other people on the planet every single day of our lives. If we remove that application or expression of human creative skill and imagination, what's left? We agree, usually, that art is important on a grand scale. Music for many is something that we'd struggle to live without. 
painting and sculpture, Michelangelo, Monet, Rembrandt, Carlo, O'Keefe, hardly anyone is going to say, now nah, bin it. Even those of us who think we don't always really get art. But why are we so selective with what we value? What's the difference, really, between a children's book illustration and a Van Gogh? The intent is the same. The principle is the same. Now, aside from making our experience on this planet more pleasant, art is a vessel for us to examine our experience. It allows us to reflect on the human condition. Throughout history, art has played an integral role in the social, cultural and ceremonial practices of a people. It's a way in which we look at the world around us to comment and discuss and try and discover what truly makes us tick. Countries are built on foundations of individuality and innovative thinking. Art is paramount to fostering and developing these ideas, particularly in children. We need art. We cannot subsist or evolve without it. So why are we so selective with what we value? People in general struggle to value things that they don't notice, which makes perfect sense really. Art is everywhere. It's in what we see, what we hear, what we touch and sometimes even what we taste. Our world is so saturated with art that we simply fail to notice it. The second part of the problem relates to how we consume our art. Technology has made it possible for us to summon virtually whatever we want, whenever we want it, with almost no human interaction whatsoever. It has broadened the reach of artists beyond what we could have imagined 20 years ago. But I think we're fools if we don't recognise that it's fundamentally changed our relationship to art. We don't need to know who designs our clothes, who produces our music or illustrates our greeting cards. We have no accountability. This is what an artist looks like. These are the writers and the performers of the music that you hear every single day. These are the creators of the art on the wall of your favourite brunch spot. They're the people that you sit next to on the train and the parents of the kids yours go to school with. These are the curators of our daily experience. We have a problem in that we need these artists in order to thrive as a society, but they cannot continue to contribute so richly to our society if we don't change our notion of value. We're only hurting ourselves if an artist has to prioritise financial survival over their craft. Where do we go from here? How do we get people to notice the art around them and to reset their internal gauge for how to value it? Well, it starts and ends with one question. Who made this? And that's your homework. Take stock of your surroundings and try to recognise the art. Try to recognise that application or expression of human creative skill and imagination. Change begins with awareness. An awareness of our surroundings will help us all to realise how much we do in fact need art and from there our perception of its value starts to change. It changes even more when we think about the people who actually create it. This is an opportunity to change the way we see the world, to bridge this gap between the art, the consumer and the artist and to ensure that human creative skill, imagination and innovation continue to be championed by the next generation.